All right, everyone, I'm going to continue on the uh, series of the week before the exam. And in the spine, uh, we have a few questions, really. There's not many questions. And most of them are focused on the atlantoaxial joint, cervical spine, and then lumbar spine, and that's it. So uh, we're going to start by the cervical spine. Um, it's just a quick demonstration of the cervical vertebra. Usually you have a small body, a small transverse for a, a transverse process with a small uh, with a transverse form and it starts from C6 to C1 and you have the vertebral spine as you can see in here and mostly a bifid spinous process as well all right um, so let's identify the important structures so we need to identify a um, number two is a fossa for odontoid pig three is an impression uh, of the vertebral artery and seven is the posterior tropical and six at the posterior arch, and five at the lateral mass of atlas, and eight is the transverse process of atlas. On the other side, in C, we have two, it's a bifid spinous process. Uh, we have four, it's the odontoid peg or odontoid process, and also we have eight at the pedicle, and seven is the lamina. All right, so let's see, on A, we said a facet for odontoid peg, Impression of vertebral artery, lateral mass of atlas, posterior arch of atlas, posterior tubercle of atlas, and then bifid spinous process, odontoid big, and then seven is the lamina, and eight is the pedicle or the axis. Okay, and this one, this is a, a lateral view x ray. We're looking at the cervical spine. We need to identify number one, uh, the anterior arch of atlas. As you can see here, this is the odontoid peg and then you have this is the anterior arch of atlas. Um, uh, uh, 14 is the spinous process of C7 and the most characteristic part it's the biggest one, the longest one and then 7 at the pedicle of the uh, C6. Okay, yeah, sorry lamina of, of C6. Of course the pedicle will be a little bit more inside. So, so as, as we saw in the first one so the, um, the pedicle is this one, and then this is the lamina, all right? And similar here, seven is the lamina, and eight is the pedicle. Okay, we need to identify one, two, five, eight. So again, this is a, a mouth view, as we can see, an open mouth view. Eight is the odontoid peg, and um, one is the anterior arch of atlas. Five is the lateral mass of atlas. Six is the inferior border or inferior articulating facet of atlas. Two is the atlantoaxial joint. Seven is the superior articulating, articulating facet of axis. Three is the bifidus pilus process. And four is obviously the axis. Okay. Okay, so we said anterior arch of atlas, atlantoaxial joint, lateral mass, and odontoid peg, and that's what's needed. Um, abnormality in this x-ray, again this is an open mouth view and uh, you can see there is fracture edema all the way around on the soft tissue and there is an odontoid peg fracture with malalignment so the distance between the odontoid peg and lateral mass on one side is um, different from the other side okay and then the answers like we said odontoid peg fracture, fracture edema and abnormal alignment and the distance between the dense and the lateral mass on C1 is not equal on both sides. The ligaments attached to the odontoid process, we have the apical ligament, the alar ligament, and the transverse ligament. Okay. And then the ligaments between the uh, C1 and C2, and this is the, are the anterior longitudinal ligament, and posterior long longitudinal ligament, and transverse atlantoaxial ligament. Yeah, so anterior longitudinal, posterior longitudinal, and transverse ligament. We need to demonstrate uh, articulation of atlas and axis. So basically, we're going to hold the, um, the atlas and try to find the facet for uh, the uh, uh, odontoid peg and make this one anter anterior and then get the facet articulating into it. So as we can see here, uh, this is um, the atlas posterior arch. And this is from the anterior surface, and you're looking for, uh, obviously, that you have the posterior tubercle in there, and this is the anterior tubercle, and that's the facet, and articulate the densina, and the bifidus spinous process, obviously, posteriorly, 
and the dense obviously will be pointing upward. Okay. Good. Um, types of a atlanto axial joint, it's a plane synovial joint, and intervertebral joint, it's a secondary cartilaginous joint. What is the first cervical spinous process to be felt? It's C7 because it's the longest one. Presence of soft tissue, presence of nuchal line, and the other spinal, spinous processes in the, in the cervical area are short and bifid. Okay, longest spinous process, the others are short and bifid, presence of soft tissue, and presence of nuchal ligament. What are the atypical cervical vertebrae that we know? We have C1, it doesn't have any body, and it doesn't have a spinous process or a uh, because it's a very short tubercle, right? That's C1. Also C2, so the body extends upward to form odontoid pig. Also, uh, we have C7, it had the longest spinous process, and very short transverse process and absence of the, transver the transverse foramen or foramen transversary. Let's identify that. So C1, no body, no spinous process. C2, the body project upward for odontoid peg, and bifid spinous process, and I should have mentioned the thick spine. Finally, long spinous process and no foramen transversorium or uh, narrow foramen transversorium. Okay, we need to demonstrate the hyoid bone and the cricoid cartilage in the living subject. So basically, uh, we need to identify for, for the hyoid bone, basically come from the lower end, both two fingers, that it will be where the hyoid bone is, and then the cricoid cartilage will be below that, okay? What are the structures found at C6? So we have the pharynx and larynx. So the pharynx will turn into the esophagus, the larynx will turn into the trachea, and then you have uh, the vertebral artery enters C6, and the presence of the cricoid cartilage, you have the superior thyroid artery enter the gland, and the middle thyroid vein leaves the gland. And I, I think there is one more, so I mentioned six of them, but there are seven. Pharynx into esophagus, larynx into trachea, vertebral artery, superior thyroid artery, middle thyroid artery, cricoid cartilage, and finally, the intermediate tendon of homohyoid muscle. I did not mention this one. The lumbar spine, a few questions about lumbar spine as well. Uh, let's look at the first vertebra. This is obviously a lumbar vertebra. It has a massive body, a narrow and a triangular foramen, uh, 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 vertebral foramen, short and sturdy spinous process, long transverse process, and no foramen inside it. Lumbar vertebra, massive body and kidney shaped, triangular foramen, uh, vertebral foramen, long transverse process and no foramen, spinous process is short and sturdy. Structures passing into the vertebral foramen, we have the dorsal row ganglia, the spinal nerves, and the recurrent meningeal, uh, meningeal nerves as well. We have the spinal arteries and the uh, communicating veins, uh, I believe, and also the transforaminal ligament. So these are five structures as far as I remember. So let's check. Dorsal row ganglia, spinal nerve roots, recurrent meningeal nerve, transforaminal ligament, spinal arteries and communicating veins. Well, I said all of them, but I said five, but there are six structures. So these are the intervertebral foramen, and it passes from here, dorsal row ganglia, root of spinal nerves, recurrent meningea nerve, transforaminal ligament, spinal arteries, and communicating veins. At which level do the lumbar puncture um, is, uh, we usually do lumbar puncture. So that will be at the level of L4-5, and this is the, the highest point of the hip bone or the anterior superior iliac spine. The layers that the needle pass through, uh, that will be the skin, subcutaneous tissue, the supraspinous ligament, and then intraspinous ligament, the ligamentum flavum, and then the epidural space, then the dura mater, and then the subdural space, uh, uh, and then you, you go to arachnoid mater, and then going into the subarachnoid space where the CSF is. Okay, so L45, and then a scan, subcutaneous tissue, supraspinous ligament, intraspinous ligament, ligament and flavum, epidural space, dura matter, subdural space, arachnoid matter, subarachnoid space. Excellent. That explains that. Supraspinous, intraspinous, the white structure in here, and then you go into the form after that. 
the lumbar spine movement, lumbar vertebrae movement, that will be flexion, extension, and lateral flexion as well. Let's see. Level of spinal cord in a newborn and adult. In a newborn, it's at L3. In an adult, it will be L12. Okay. The content of a spinal canal below L2, that will be the coda equina and phylum terminale. And I should have mentioned cornus middleus as well. Location of paravertebral venous plexus. So it's quite an easy one. So if we go back to maybe this diagram, so you have uh, basically two groups. Internal group and external group. The external, anterior and posterior, and the internal, anterior and posterior as well. Okay. We want to mention the locations of each group. So the anterior external in front of the body of the lumbar vertebrae, and posterior external related to the spinous process of the lumbar vertebrae. And then if we want to talk about the internal, you have anterior and posterior, and these are in relation to the dura matter. So anterior to the dura matter and posterior to the dura matter, okay, as easy as that. Sternal, it's anterior, so vertebral body, posterior, spinous process, internal, and this is anterior to dura matter and posterior to the dura matter inside the vertebral canal. Tumors metastasize into the spine, we have some lytic tumor and the scleretic tumor. Scleretic tumor, prostate cancer, but lytic tumor could be anything really, you can think about a thyroid cancer, uh, multiple uh, myeloma, and uh, uh, also uh, breast cancer, lung cancer, uh, maybe colorectal cancer as well, and bladder cancer, and renal cancer. So basically metastasis to all this area uh, can uh, happen from anywhere in the body really, but more likely to be breast and uh, prostate, athletic and scleritic and multiple myeloma. Okay. Yeah, we mentioned all of those, but I did not mention the squamous cell carcinoma of the skin and the cervix. The scleritic lesions would be the prostate cancer. The spine is done. Um, and see you in the next video. Thank you.